have some very enthusiastic people who have been working a lot behind the scenes. And so I'd like to ask the choreographer, Michelle Bakulabali, to please come up and speak. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Juliana for inviting us uh, to this program. Um, and, um, and then when, I, when she asked me to do this, um, I thought immediately of uh, someone really special to me, Matthew Garza, um, who graduated. He was one of my students at Brown years and years ago. I won't quite say what year. Um, but Matthew uh, helped me devise all kinds of work, um, both in West Africa and at Brown University for years. And he's now the head of the dance program at TAPA um, Magnet Arts High School. And so this is about children. And um, the students that we are working with, who you'll see, um, are in eighth grade. And I'll let Matt talk a little bit about TAPA um, after I introduce the project a little bit. So we came here, um, one of my Brown students, there are two Brown students that are working with me um, today as well. And we came here and looked at the mill. I've been here, oh gosh, years ago. Um, but never with the focus of really understanding the nature of what went on here. Um, and we showed some documentaries to the students where the, we saw the children with scoliosis and many of them literally were so deformed after two years of 12 hours a day being hunched over repeating the same thing that they could no longer walk. Um, young children uh, completely incapacitated. Uh, fingers cut off. I mean, we looked at all of the manifestations of this revolution. Um, and also that they did revolt, that they did finally, it took quite a while, but they did finally revolt against these harsh conditions um, and the multiple illnesses and deformities that came out of this uh, wonderful thing that happened. Yes, good and bad. But the children suffered. So when we were developing this piece, we wanted to incorporate a lot of those ideas. Um, and I, you know, it's one thing to come to a museum, but when the museum comes to you and it's in your body, I think that the students will never forget this. When they look at a mill again, they have an embodied experience um, and they will remember. So, um, yeah, I'll invite Matt up a little bit to talk you, about- You brought two students with you from Brown. And yeah. where are they? Um, I think everybody's in place. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So Shannon and um, Han Han Sun Han Sun. Are, are here as the Brown students. And thank you, Matthew. Thanks so much for having us. This is my first year at TAPA. Um, a little bit of background to TAPA. And this is our first graduating class. We've been open for six years. Um, we're performing our charter school, um, and which means that we are free. Um, and we are a public school, and that students are admitted based on a lottery. So regardless of income um, or any aspect of their profile, regardless of how well their profile was academically or behaviorally, um, they have a chance to, to come and be an artist, which is why I love working at this school. Um, I'm super, even after I'm done paying off my student loans, I will forever be in debt to Michelle for what <laughs> the experience she gave me at Brown. Um, and I'm so grateful to get to collaborate with her and to have my students work with her. Um, and I'm especially excited to be here at the mill. Actually, um, studying the Industrial Revolution is why I became a teacher. Um, and I'm really interested. This experience, as Michelle said, is an opportunity for my students to reflect on and be grateful for their for their lives today. Um, and, but as an educator, I think it's a nice opportunity to really reflect on how positive change happens and how positive change can continue happening, um, particularly for low-income students of color who are still suspended and expelled at an alarming rate in the traditional public school. So I think um, you know, hearing about the monotony of a factory and how um, physical ailments emerge from, from that experience and thinking about um, the monotony of the school day and, and how um, school public schools are modeled after a factory and um, the mental health concerns that are arising from young people, particularly low income students of color, um, the mental health concerns that are arising from their experience in school and how we can improve that. Um, and I think TAPA is a place where we really use art as the first tool 
to combat that experience. And the first tool um, to get students to be passionate um, learners and passionate human beings. So um, this is very exciting. Um, again, these students are in eighth grade, so I'm super proud of them for, for what they were able to, to do and the maturity they are able to bring to this performance. So. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to introduce uh, Mark Tabor, who's here, who's just able to do anything. So thank you, Mark. <laughs>